three. So, feeling good. Of course, not too bad. I actually passed Pegatron on my uh, first lap. Didn't pass it on the second lap, but yeah, hands are a little rough. Passed Stairway to Heaven both times. But good course here at uh, OKC. Nice, a lot of sections that I can actually run on, unlike yesterday, which is a lot of power hiking. Um, so, actually, we're putting out decent splits, averaging a little under, I think I'm averaging like one hour 25 minutes per lap. So, whoop. get around, uh, uh, depending, on, depending on what time they, we close the course today. Somewhere between 18 and 24 miles. Something like that. I'll see you lap four. All right, sounds good. Well, welcome, man. And you are done. Day seven is in the books. I saw some video today from uh, from Conquer the Gauntlet, Oklahoma City. How'd it go? Uh, good. Today went, uh, today went real smooth. We, uh, we spent the night driving. Uh, that was a bit rough because we'd done a 12-hour drive the night before, so basically had to repeat that. Uh, so we left uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, from the site of Dirt Runner, got in the car and drove all night long, um, you know, taking naps in the car, switching out drivers, uh, and drove directly to the race venue uh, at Oklahoma City, just outside Oklahoma City. Showed up. The uh, course was pretty good for me. Uh, it was actually it seemed like a real dry area, so uh, which helped because a lot of times when you multi-lap events, you know, the course gets super muddy and it gets like real thick becomes hard to run uh so because the course was dry it was actually really nice and uh nice for multi-lapping nice for running and i felt like i finally it was like one of the first times i felt like i got a break all week between all the different venues i've gone to um as far as like the terrain itself it was still rolling hills and um as you know like, you know conquer the gauntlet's obstacles are are never a joke they're always pretty hard so uh had to deal with that but uh decided to do four laps uh, which put me at 19 miles, and uh, that's based off of you know kind of where I was as an average, and uh, you know that put me right around a total of averaging 23 miles a day. Um, and I also didn't want to make the owners wait around for me to finish, so I wanted to finish like with a group of people. So to have like, cause, I mean, the whole thing's a charity event, so I kind of wanted that to have a little more uh, kind of publicity, uh, you no know, more people involved. So I did my three first three laps basically on my own. Uh, one of the guys, Joel, uh, from the Conquer the Gauntlet Street team was pacing me. And then um, the fourth lap like turned into a party. I mean, you can check out my page. You can check out Brenna Calvert's page. But we were like live streaming the entire thing. Uh, they brought like a this big-ass log, and they're like completing obstacles with it. it it's it's hysterical. It's actually impressive. Uh, there's, some, there's some pretty impressive videos, like going across monkey bars with like two guys carrying a log on their feet. It's it's crazy. Yeah, I saw the uh, I saw the rope climb with the log. That was that was impressive. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, w one of the guys actually in, in the monkey bar video, uh, uh, one of the guys uh, Tracy. We actually didn't get him on video, but he actually goes across with the sixty pound uh, sandbag on his feet. He's a bigger guy, so he's a little, a little stronger than some of us little wiry types. But uh, yeah, it was impressive. Awesome, man. Well, I'm glad that it worked out how you wanted. You were really hoping that today would be that good grand finale, and it sounds like it was, so I'm, I'm really glad that worked out for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, can't go wrong with the Conquer the Gauntlet event, and the, uh, it's, you know, it's, we're a team, but well, I, like, I mean, it's, it's more like a family. We went out to dinner afterwards, and it was just, it was just a great time. It was a fitting ending to the week. Uh, it was, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I definitely, definitely imagine it was. And like I said, the videos are rad, and I, I, I watched a bunch of those and just kind of keeping up with what you've been doing. But um, so just kind of as a whole, man, how do you feel about this event? How do you feel? Was it was it successful? Was it what you wanted? Did you you know did you get to where you wanted to get personally? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was uh, – I still haven't actually added up how much money we raised. Um, and I expect some of that money to come in afterwards because – you know, it shows like I wasn't just talking. I actually, you know, did what I said I was going to do. Um, so I expect some of that money to come in afterwards. Um, I think we got the. I, I think I raised some attention for OCR. Uh, I know there was a local media. Uh, NBC was there at uh, Tuesday and interviewed me. So I'm supposed to be on some. I'm not even sure what show or episode I'm supposed to be on, but it's 
it's supposed to air Thursday at whatever NBC local stations in uh, kind of near Albany, um, Albany, New York. Uh, so I raised some attention for OCR. You know, I kind of showed, you know, between connecting, going to all the different venues, uh, I raised some awareness for just kind of how big OCR is in general and uh, shared some of, you know, my, um, shared a lot of experiences with people. You know, the, I'd say my, besides today, my other favorite day was probably Wednesday at Noob Sanity where we had a large group of people and I just got to talk to a lot of different people and hear a lot of different opinions on, you know, OCR and, uh, you know, what they liked about the sport, what they didn't, you know, where the sport was going and, yeah, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely, definitely a personal challenge. Uh, that was kind of the other, um, big goal I had and, uh, it definitely did challenge me. So I was, uh, I mean, I was on the course eight to like 11 hours a day some, on some days. So, um, it's basically wake up, head to the course, you know, start moving and, uh, finish shower and repeat for seven days. Yeah, man. So, so overall sounds to me like it was a success. It sounds like you, you got to where you wanted, which I think is, is ultimately important. I mean, you were raising money for charity, but you also had that kind of like personal goal as well. So I, I think you did awesome. And, and ultimately you proved, you know, not only that OCR is rad, but I mean, you're kind of a badass. So, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you at world's toughest mutter and crushing it this year. Yeah. And the, you know, like, uh, I, I know like when I first started to get, tried to get in, or was about to get into OCR, like one of the things uh, that kind of held me back was like, I actually didn't think like the people in it were serious, like, uh, you know, like serious athletes. And, um, well, I'm more, I'm obviously more the endurance guy, you know, I, I don't think anyone looking at, you know, the athletes we have in the short course and the long course and world stuff is mutter, like all, all across the board, but could even say that with any sort of amount of, uh, truth to it. I mean, I, th- I think we, you know, we show as OCR athletes, we can hold our own, uh, whether it's the long distance stuff or the short course stuff. Um, well, I, I definitely agree. And I think that the, you know, it's, there's definitely no shortage of money and time that most elite athletes are willing to put into their, to their OCR game. I mean, I know a lot of these people spend a lot of money and a lot of time getting coaching and making sure their body's right and their mechanics are right and they're doing everything perfect. So, I mean, I really have to say, as as an OCR as a whole, the athletes really, they really try to be professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, well, I'd say one of the, uh, backing up a little bit to one of your other questions, the uh, I had initially set the goal of twenty six point two, and uh, I think we talked about it a little bit on the last episode, but you know, terrain just uh, didn't allow that to happen, and uh, so I kind of lowered the goal a little bit because I was, uh, you know, basing it off of. Uh, what I'd experienced at other permanent venues, and this was uh, the permanent venues we lined up. I lined up against for this uh, event were, I mean, they were hard. <laughs> even like, even the ones that were, you know, quote unquote, felt easy at the time. Like when I compare them to other events, like, I mean, they, it wasn't like it wasn't like multi lapping a warrior dash or, you know, multi lapping a tough motor. Even the tough motor wasn't like multi lapping a tough motor because it was on a ski mountain, which is the only time I've ever done one like that um so definitely i'd say individual days were definitely a little more challenging than i was expecting uh and then uh the the other the the funny part is so you know people asking me all all day all week people like oh how you feeling i'm like yeah i feel great you know or i feel good uh, good enough um and so i I crossed the finish line today i sit down i'm like yeah my legs hurt we go back to the hotel i take a nap and i wake up and i'm like i feel terrible like Everything hurts. My legs hurt. My back hurts. My forearms hurt. My hands are sensitive to the touch. Like I don't want to hold anything. Um, it just, I think it just goes to show you how strong your mind is. It, it literally can block out pain and over, like, it's amazing. Like I even, I kind of like amazed myself, like, cause I was just like ignoring all these like little aches and, uh, pains for the last week. And I finally said, okay, you know, I can, I can relax. And my, my brain's like, you are, <laughs> you're in trouble. What did you do to us? Right, yeah, your body held up just long enough to get to the end. Like I've, I've experienced similar things, like running a marathon or you know doing a very hard race where you kind of ignore the pain for the short period, you know, like a hour or a couple hours, and then you cross the finish line, and then everything hurts, and you feel like you can't walk. But I've never had it like extend out like this for like a week, where I kind of just like, you know, your mind's just being like, okay, that's that hurts, but it's not important now. Pretty interesting feeling. 
Yeah, definitely. So how long did you uh how long did you keep your belt today? Uh oh yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, so I made it to the uh so before I went into the race I, I was like, Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna try every obstacle twice. If I can't do it twice, I'm just gonna move on because I can't I can't be standing around all day retrying obstacles. Um so I actually lost it at the it's called the Tarzan swing. It's basically the Conquer the Gauntlet version of the rig. And um it was like a it's like it was like nunchucks to like a bunch of balls to nunchuck to a couple more balls. Um, so I tried there. You know, my, my hands were just so sensitive to the touch that I, I fell off almost immediately on the first one. And then I tried it again, made it about halfway to three quarters and fell off again. And then I was, I was just like, all right, I, I, like, I really want to sit here and, <laughs> and finish this, but I, I can't be, uh, I can't be wasting my day there. Um, and if you, if you've never seen Conquer the Gauntlet's, uh, Tarzan swing, their rig, what makes it hard is unlike so regular platinum rigs, you know, you can keep the holds close to your body. Um, these are spaced out pretty far. So it's the equivalent of doing a rig with every other hold missing. So you really you actually like you need momentum and you need to have movement to be able to reach the next hold. Like uh maybe six or eight holds, but it's really the equivalent of like, you know, twelve or sixteen holds, but half of them are missing. Yeah, and it sounds like because of how much you have to stretch, you have a lot of weight on one hand for a period of time while you're getting to the next grip. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, you, you can look at pictures of me from, I think it was uh, Kansas City, and I'm like, there are pictures where it looks like I'm stretched out completely. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty short guy, so uh, yeah, definitely a challenging thing. But then I, what was funny is like I got the Pegatron, and I was like, oh, this isn't going to go well. You know, my hands hurt. I'm exhausted. And I got through it no problem. <laughs> like, I just breezed through it. I was like, what the? I know that's the one you said you were worried about yesterday. Yeah, that went fine. And then uh, I, 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 I couldn't do that past the first lap. Uh, but uh, the other ones I got, you know, I did Stairway to Heaven, the one that's going to be at the OCR, WC. Uh, very cool looking obstacle. Uh, Ninja Warrior, I think, calls it like Devil Steps. But and I did that one four times, uh, even though my, my it was tearing up my hands. But yeah, good times. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear that. Overall, it sounded like it was a success. Today was awesome. Good, good kind of icing on the cake or cherry on top or whatever you want to an analogy you want to use. But it sounded sounds good, man. So, any other kind of last stuff about today or about the the seven days as a whole? Uh, no, I mean, I think I I think I covered everything I want to over the the course of the seven days. Obviously, you know. Uh, I couldn't have done it without the support of my, you know, my wife, my baby, my dad, and uh, Stai, my driver slash uh, runner. He did actually did 60, I think he did 60 miles total, or 61 miles over the course of seven days. So he was, you know, he'd run a lap or two per day and uh, film some stuff that would go on the internet. And then he would also basically drive from venue to venue. So he was super crucial. Uh, and then all the people that came out for pacing, like you have no idea. I don't think... The, yeah, I think they're like, oh, cool, this, this seems fun to go out with someone. But, like, I don't think they really understand, like, how much easier that makes it. Um, you know, so that really – it really takes your mind off of things and, you know, it helps pass time. Um, but, yeah, they, they – a uh, huge help for all the people who participated. Um, and we still have some leftover uh, medals and T-shirts. So if anyone wants to donate, uh, my offer still stands. Of, uh, it's like $25 for each one plus a ten dollar shipping fee uh so you can go to teamstrengthspeed.com or uh, go to my facebook page you can look that stuff up and uh, make a donation to folds of honor you know if, if you respect what i did or you know, like what i did or whatever uh please make a donation like i said any small amount counts so um, yeah excellent man well I'm, I'm really glad to hear it and uh I, I hope that, uh, you know, I hope this does spread awareness, you know, I, as being in the military as well, I, I really support what you did for that charity and stuff like that. So, you know, I thank you for going out and doing that. Cause that, you know, again, raises awareness and everything like that. So super rad. I, I think this was a good week and I enjoyed talking to you every day. So thank you for, for coming on. Yeah, same here. And, uh, a final, a final thank you to all the venues that participated. Uh, you know, they really opened their doors and uh, some of them, I, I felt like I was, some of these people I'd never met in person before, and they treated me like family. I mean, letting me uh, – the, the two nights we didn't have a hotel, they essentially let me, like, shower in their place. And, um, you know, they some of them gave me, like, parting gifts, which is completely unnecessary. Like, I mean, I, I'm the one who should have been giving them gifts for 
allowing me to use their facilities. Um, it was just, I can't say enough good things about these venues. Um, so if you're in the area or you're passing or you're looking to do like a destination to a you know, different type of race, you know, I think permanent OCRs are, uh, will give you a different feel than the uh, standard uh, Spartan or Tough Mudder or Warrior Dash, you know, any like the big three basically. Awesome, man. Well, uh, I think I'll let you go and relax and, and kind of just reflect on your seven days and just be stoked that you're done. So, Thanks for everything, Jay. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, you take it easy. Thank you for listening to the Overcome and Run podcast. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our show notes at overcomeandrun.com. And most importantly, subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app. This was the Overcome and Run podcast.